Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to our talk on the Kubernetes infrastructure. Let's see. All right, so we're going to be talking about the Kubernetes project's cloud infrastructure and the kind of things that we've been doing lately. All right, so introductions. Uh, my name is Mohammed. I work at Thousand Eyes by Cisco. I am a SickKids Infra Tech Lead. I am a Knative Maintainer, and I'm also a CNCF Ambassador. Um, and my name, my name is Arnaud Mukam. I am currently independent, and I'm the CCHAN tech lead for the Kubernetes infrastructure, also one of the release managers for the project. All right, so for those of you who don't know, SIG Kubernetes infrastructure manages the Kubernetes project's cloud infrastructure. So we have a couple of critical services that we run. So we're on the project's image registry called registry.case.io. It should be very familiar to everybody here. We also have the Prow CI that I'm going to share a screenshot of in a second. But that's the primary CI that we use at Kubernetes. It's a custom built CI that we've built. Um, we also have dl.case.io that serves our blobs or binary assets of all the Kubernetes binaries. Um, and we also have some miscellaneous cloud infrastructure that we're running on AWS, Azure, GCP, and DigitalOcean. Um, these are primarily Kubernetes clusters that we use for end to end testing. And we have some assets that are required to test cloud hardware for various cloud provider features. Um, all right, so to your, as you can see here, this is the Kubernetes CI dashboard. So on most PRs um, in our Kubernetes and Kubernetes 6, GitHub org, you will see a link for a job that will take you to here. So this is a list of all our jobs, how long they've been running, and what's going on. Um, this project has its own dedicated repository, um, plus the configuration for it lives in this GitHub repo. All right. As, you, as I said earlier, we run a lot of cloud infrastructure, so we are adopting some modern tooling. So we're using Argo CD to manage our clusters. So we've got like four or five of those um, running various bits of applications. All right. So. Six, seven months ago, I stood up here in Paris um, at the previous KubeCon mentioning all the cool things we were doing this year. So we said we were going to work on the CI migration. So for context, the Kubernetes project is 10 years old. Um, and Google was the first company that founded it. And they were nice enough to run the CI for it in their private cloud accounts, right? So we've moved all of that out to community-owned accounts. So that was the migration that we were planning on doing this year. We managed to do that sometime in August. Um, we also had various bits and bobs that were living in various Google accounts that we had to extradite. All right, so this morning, as you saw, there was a special award that CNCF put together to recognize a lot, most of the people that worked on there. Myself, Arno, and a couple of other people that I see in this room worked with us on that initiative. And we were able to deliver that migration successfully. Um, so, at a high level, this is what we managed to do. So, dl.kist.io is finally powered using a proper CDN. Um, in the past, people used to fetch release binaries directly from a Google Cloud storage bucket. That bucket has no longer been updated. So, if you're still doing that, please stop doing that. The CI is now running fully in community-owned accounts. Um, with access to all the maintainers that are working on this project and any SREs that are interested in working on that. We're also serving assets more efficiently to customers all around the world. Um, all right, where are we at? This bit, yeah. So basically what you see here is the current traffic well, too fastly because now we use a CDM provider. We have some bandwidth we deal with and currently we, I think we serve over like one petabyte for traffic per month or mostly the binaries of the asset we produce as a project. And we should, this is kind of like expensive for us. That's why we basically decide to put a city and which is a general practice for open source project. I would say successful project because we will have to pay for the egress cost of it. And currently, that's why we use Fastly right now. So, okay, thanks. So the other, I, mean, I would say the next step for the SIG will be the migration from GCR to Archive Registry. So as you know, GCR was like the first product by GCP to host container images, and now they're 
seed the deprecation, which is about to be removed during 2025. So one of the first things for the project will be to migrate to Art registry next year. So we don't distress, we don't disturb the CI process and the release process because we no longer can use GCR currently. So I think at this stage, we just make sure we don't basically put pressure on the community to do a, an aggressive migration. So we slowly trying to like push all of the sub project to migrate to artifact registry. So in order to do that, we need support. From an infrastructure perspective, we basically need to like have to consume a lot of cloud providers. So we are doing all of these thanks to them because they are basically doing current no, recurrent the donation to the project. So we basically can build all this infrastructure and make sure it's like kind of transparent for everyone. And we recently welcomed Microsoft Azure as a partner and cloud provider we can use to basically do more stuff and do validation for feature we ship on Kubernetes. So what of we do we currently do a few things on the testing, which is basically test Kubernetes on Windows Server, which is not which is was not really possible in some extent on GCP and AWS, but right now with Azure, we can have access to more different skills of Windows Server instances to do more tests, more validation. And that basically help all user and Azure customer to safely migrate to Kubernetes cluster. We also do uh, cluster API for Azure because we know there's like, I would say partners and people interested to basically provide, manage Kubernetes cluster using cluster API, but now we, we could like, provide more testing on Azure, which is also the third item is here, you know, like be able to also run like specific unique tests we can do on different cloud provider, like be able to test kubectl on Windows 11, for example, those kind of things that basically help us do because like Azure is now part of the partnership with the project. So, now, this is all basically what we did for this year, the different achievements and different success we had. We now need to think about 2025 as basically because we're still in on the path of operating infrastructure right now. Because the achievement we did was part of the journey of, of a migration from Google to a community infrastructure. Now we need to like talk about basically, now we own more, almost everything, how we operate better. So one of those things is like, give more access to community because currently the access, I would say access in a sense, like see the resource we use and whatever is like budget or basically even like be able to see a failure inside the infrastructure is not currently possible because we were like during the migration phase. But right now we will try to basically make that better for the community in general. Any Kubernetes maintainer should be able to access the infrastructure in order to debug whatever bug is happening during the development of the future. That's all the one thing. And uh, we currently, we pick Okta basically to do that from a, for SSO currently. We're trying to explore that and see what's happening. Also improve the observability stack at the CI level because basically we also need to make sure we like run efficiently the different tests we have, which is not always easy depending on basically what you develop. So we have like feedback from the maintainer that basically they like visibility on the basically on the resource consumption of the test, which is like sometimes like the test crash because there's enough there's not enough memory of CPU allocation to the test, which is the kind of things that might be trivial for a lot of people, but it's not because there's no visibility. So the idea is like basically build a complete unified stack over all the cloud provider we have. So basically contributors and maintainers can basically see how the test behave and whatever metrics they could use to improve the feature they develop. Okay, and one of the thing Beside that, it's also cost. Yes, we have all those prior provider donate, donating a few of credits to use their services, but we also need to be efficient about this because it's easy to throw money out in infrastructure, but we also need to be efficient so we don't waste resources. 
And like I said, there's like the GCI to AI migration, which is one of the things we need to achieve because GCP is like deleting the product. And the last thing we're trying to do is like self service infrastructure consumption in the sense like currently in order to get a resource, specific resources, the community need to reach out to the SIG to basically create those resources. And we basically would like to stop doing that by providing more automation and using infrastructure as code as a way to basically bootstrap the infrastructure which is a pattern that most of the platform engineering thing are doing right now, and we're basically trying to follow that. So, yeah, I think at this stage of the infrastructure, everything is fine, but we still have fire to fight, because basically we have to deal with deprecation, different incidents. I, will, I remember last year there was a data center, there was a fire in the data center in France, and we, it was like impacting the distribution, the OCI images. So yeah, there's a lot of things happening without our control. So we're trying to basically maintain that in the best way possible. So that's why I think currently we are fine in the fire of things. So yeah, if we are interested to basically help maintain the infrastructure, we basically are like, we have a Slack channel on the Kubernetes server. We also basically, if you can, if you want to screenshot the second links, which basically give that the schedule and the charter, so you basically know what we're talking about, what we're doing, and we meet twice a month on Wednesday at, I would say, yeah, 9 GMT, 9 PM GMT. Or for those of you in the US, it's 1 PM Pacific time. Yeah. Um, okay. Both of us are from Europe, so that's why it's written like that. Uh, and thank you to attending this talk. And is there like any question? There is a microphone in the middle. If you have any questions about what we're doing, any. All right, going once. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much for attending. Um, and we shall see you around in a future KubeCon or a future community meeting. Um, thank you so much, everybody.